Papa and Ryan, brilliant on the call. The Niners, amazing on the field. A beatdown in San Francisco, really in Santa Clara, as the Niners dominated, made a huge statement. Let's bring in the voice of the 49ers, Greg Papa, joining us on this Friday. Greg, just me today, Jason Ross. How much fun did you have on Sunday night? Well, from the very start, I mean, the opening drive, they go right down the field and uh, hit George Kittle on a touchdown and the great stuff up in the pocket and get around to Marcus Lawrence by Brock. The 49ers, Jason, on their opening drives that you have games, they've gone touchdown, touchdown, field goal, touchdown, touchdown. I mean, they've been behind for like a couple of minutes in L.A. when the Rams took that 17-10 to 10 lead right before halftime, and then the Niners came right back and reclaimed the lead. So, amazing. And then this game was just, you know, Dallas got back into the game a little bit, but every time Dallas would score, whether it was a touchdown or a field goal, that's all they had was one of each. The 49ers came right back and responded with a touchdown. So, Kittle, obviously, a huge game. I love that that play you just heard. Mm -hmm. Um, 18 toss, Gumby (laughs) is what it's called. Gumby's the blocking scheme to get out there with George Kittle. And, uh, when I saw him running that in practice, I thought, how the hell is that going to work? <laughs> you, got, you, got a, you got a handoff to McCaffrey, a reverse back to Debo, and a flip back to Purdy for a flea flicker against one of the fastest defenses in football? Hope they blocked Micah Parsons for like five seconds. But they they ran it so perfectly. And I thought that the one my main takeaway from this game was Micah was not right. I, I didn't feel like he was coming into the game with the ankle injury off the previous week against New England. And they just beat the crap out of him. <laughs> they just pummeled him. They sideswiped him. They they hit him, you know, chipping, going out. And whether it was Trent or McKivitz or pulling a guard like Burford, or they just whacked him the whole game. So I know he was hurt coming into it. I wondered how he's feeling going into the Monday night game against the Chargers because – yeah, we talk about the pretty play calling and the movement that Kyle does, but at its core, this is a violent football team. And obviously violent on defense with Fred and Dre, the way they tackle in the kill zone and, and Nick and Hargrave up front. But the offensive line, Jason, they are physical. They, they pounded the Cowboys. Yeah, and, and, you know, there were so many stars, so many heroes. Uh, I'm glad you mentioned Fred Warner. I mean, look, he's played at a high level for years now, but I thought his all-around game statistically was great, but just the way he played, he was everywhere. How great, in your mind, was Warner on Sunday? And he only played like 38 snaps. <laughs> no. and he, had a, he had a punch. He had a pick. He had a sack. He was all over the place. And I sat down with him yesterday for at length. You'll hear it on the pregame show on, on Sunday morning. Um, and went through each play. And it's just, he's so smart. He's so on it. Like his, his sack of Dak, he started out that play with CD Lamb went in motion from left to right. Isaiah Oliver followed. So Dallas knew it was a man. It's a third and short. And and Fred just dropped a little bit. He was spying on Dak, but he saw CD come across. He just bumped him a little bit on that action. And then Dak pulled it. And then he went to go get Dak. And how about the punch out? Mm-hmm. What a punch was on the fumble at Tony Pollard and then the interception he backpedals on the opposite side of the formation um, to, to the left and then the Dak throws to his right to Demo Lenore on a slant to Michael Gallup and Demo Lenore is sitting inside on the slant, t- tips the ball up in the air and Fred comes across so I think he's playing his best football uh, he's ever played he's just so smart he's so detailed, he's the leader of that defense He's such a calm guy. And then when the game starts, he just turns into, you know, Mike Singletary or Hacksaw Reynolds or Jack Lambert. He comes a madman. And then he got Dre Greenlaw next to him. And he just, see the hardest hitting linebacker in football right now? Anything over the middle, they call it the kill zone, where the, the pass rush is so quick, the quarterback has to check it down to the running back. If you're a running back, do you want to catch the ball in the kill zone of that green lawn Warner bearing down on you? <laughs> no, thanks. No, thanks as always. We're uh, talking with the voice of the 49ers, Greg Papa here. Greg, a uh, little remnants after the game, right? Obviously, the Niners totally dominate. They win, I don't know, for a day or two, uh, whether it's Micah Parsons or Debo. Uh, still talking a little bit. I'm, I like it. I'm glad that it's still there. Obviously, the Niners have dominated, ended the Cowboys' seasons twice in a row, and then uh, blew them out this week. What did you make of just the – 
you know, extra little chirping uh, for a day or two after that game? Well, it started with George Kittle going on McAfee and divulging why he wore the F, F Dallas T-shirt. And he wore that under his shoulder pads and gear jersey. And I, you know, it goes back to, um, and he was the guy that was in the broadcast booth uh, before our group now with Tim years ago as Gary Plummer. Mm-hmm. So um, Gary Plummer was new to the Niners from the Chargers that year in 94. He didn't have the history of losing to them in the championship game in 92, 93. But he, um, he broke out an FU or F Dallas t-shirt the week of the championship game in January of 95. And um, he set the tone. I guess he wore, we had Dennis uh, Brown on this week on the radio. He was on that defense. That Plummer wore that t-shirt the entire week <laughs> of the championship game. So his teammates saw it in practice. So I was impressed that George knew that, that did the research for that. I think that's really impressive that he got deep into the Cowboy rivalry to come up with a Gary Plummer homage T-shirt. And then it got out there. He may get fined. Yeah. I heard you fine him like $10,000, $11,000 for that. Um, and then Micah Parsons found out, and he thought it was personal. Not personal. He didn't say F Micah Parsons. He said F Dallas. So, and it, and it was historical. So, whatever. Um, and then I love Debo's comment about, we see those guys again. Yeah. Uh, it could be worse because honestly, when JP Mason scored, Jason, to make it 42 10, there was 14 minutes to go in the game. Crazy. They could have easily laid a 50 burger on those guys. Yeah. Uh, and we've referenced that number with you 30, for, you know, Purdy, 30 for Purdy. If the Niners get 30, they're going to be tough to beat. And now they go to 42 on Dallas's defense. I mean, it, it feels like the Niners can keep doing this. I mean, how much are they, I, I, I guess, even at their peak right now, Greg? They're perfectly balanced. I mean, they're, they're, they're so good on offense. And I just talked to Kyle about it yesterday for a long uh, interview we do on Thursdays. And he, he might, he's always going to deflect with five games in. We have a long way to go. And he had a great offense in Atlanta in 2016 that went to the Super Bowl, and Matt Ryan was the MVP. But this running game, they're perfectly balanced, Jace. They, they, they ran the ball 41 times on Sunday for 170 yards and two touchdowns. And McCaffrey did not have a great statistical game. J.P. Mason was the leading runner, and they still got 41 carries. And then Purdy throws four touchdown passes over 250 yards on 24 attempts. So it's just they're so efficient in the pass game off the threat of the run. And that's why that that reverse flea flicker play, toss 18 Gumby, was, was so beautiful because it involves two run actions, and then into a pass. And that's what they are right now. They're perfectly balanced. They, if you're the other team, yeah, you're going to take McCaffrey away. But which McCaffrey? He can run it. He can line up as a wide receiver. So the threat of the, the run sets up the pass or vice versa. So on offense, they're so balanced. Now, all that being said, this Cleveland defense is better than Dallas's, and they're going to be a challenge. Uh, Miles Garrett, who's their Micah Parsons, but He's more like their Demarcus Lawrence. He's more like both, really. He's big like Demarcus Lawrence. He weighs, they list him at 272, so he's even bigger. And I think he weighs about 280. He's a monster. But he has the quickest get off of any player in football, even quicker than Micah. They have all these analytics, and they have a couple of analytics for him. Quickest get off, which is just off the ball across the line. He does that in 0.61 seconds which is the fastest of anybody in football. And then quickest to pressure, which is the get off the snap to actually pressuring the quarterback. He does that in 2.12 seconds. So Brock's like two, three, two, four. So, you know, but Trent Williams will block him. So can Trent pick up another couple tenths of a second and buy Brock time, but he's that good of a player. And then the corners are good. Denzel Ward's a good player. Greg Newsom, their safeties are good. Greg Delp, Grant Delp, and they have an opposite edge rusher to Miles Garrett and Zadaria Smith, who we know well. Um, so we've seen him a few times. So the, the, this, the Dallas defense went going into the game last week was number one. Jace, they're not number one anymore. <laughs> the 49ers laid six touchdowns on them. Cleveland's is number one, and they're number one overall. They're number one against the pass, and they're number four against the run. 
So I like the 49er offense is so balanced. Their defense, they don't really have a weakness in this defense. They don't take the ball away and they're not great inside the red zone. So scoring in the red zone will be, will be key. But this is, this is the ultimate battle. 49er offense scoring over 33 points a game against this Cleveland Brown defense, which is in yardage number one. The Niners are actually number one in points allowed per game at 13.6. But this is going to be a good matchup. And you got to play it on the road. Right. So your linemen have to play a silent count. They love football in Cleveland. They're Denver. They love football. At least they did until what's going on this now. Uh, but they love football in Cleveland big time. So this will be a challenge because it will be hard to hear. The tackles will have a challenge being out of an island uh, with the silent count. Certainly and that happened to blocks at Arias Smith and then mainly Miles Garrett. Yeah, the other part, you know, certainly defenses are strength. You just alluded to that. They do run the ball pretty well, top five in the NFL in rushing. Uh, I wonder how effective that'll be, you know, quarterback-wise with them, with the uncertainty they have there. So what do you think about the Browns' offense against the Niners' defense? Well, they don't have Nick Chubb. He had that gruesome, gruesome knee injury on Monday Night Football in Week 2 at Pittsburgh. So they got they got three guys they'll roll. Jerome Ford will be their number one guy, really fast. Also good with getting out of the backfield and matching up. As a pass catcher, he can run some double moves, a little bit like McCaffrey. He's not McCaffrey, but he's fast. And they have Kareem Hunt, longtime Kansas City Chief, who also has great ability to catch the ball and uh, a good three-down back. So that'll be the main two guys. Um, P.J. Walker, their quarterback, I'm assuming he's going to play. I think they're going to de- declare Deshaun out maybe today because he's not practiced all week with this rotator cuff, uh, the bruise on the shoulder. Um, I, I, DJ Walker, I don't know how much XFL football you watch, Jason, if at all, but the 2020 pandemic year, when we had nothing else to do, I actually watched this guy a lot play for the Houston Roughnecks. And, uh, I thought he was the best player in that league. Um, I think he would have won the league MVP that year. They wind up shutting it down before they finished the year, but they were five and all. He led the league in almost every passing category yards and touchdowns. And he's made some starts in the NFL. He's not a bad player. He actually played against the Niners last year when we were in Charlotte in October when uh, Baker left, Baker Mayfield left with an ankle injury. He came in late. And then when they fired Matt Rule and they uh, they brought in Steve Wilkes as the interim head coach. Steve is now the 49er defensive coordinator. He coached uh, uh, P.J. Walker. So uh, there's some familiarity with this guy. He's got a good arm, throws with accuracy, good runner, very good runner. They'll run some zone read in this game. He's small, though. That's the one thing. He's 5'11". Um, so if you can't get to him on the pass rush, just get your hands up and, and block a shot. Well, we know it's going to be another game worth checking out. We're going to have it for everybody here on Sacktown Sports. Greg, have a great call, and we look forward to uh, talking to you next week. Thank you, Jays. Where's David this, this weekend? He away all week? Or yeah, he's, uh, he's off all week. He's back, though, next week. We'll be uh, re- ready to uh, to bounce back with you next week. we got Warriors and Kings on Sunday That's night. That's right. You know, you, know you know that. You know you know that. Yeah, the rivalry continues. I love it. <laughs> Good talking to you, brother. All right, you too. Thank you, Greg. That's uh, Greg Pop, the great voice of the San Francisco 